welcome to the Onyx Hunt eScouting series. And this is video three. Now we're getting into the good stuff. This is kind of the part where we get to explore the maps and look for all the things that we've been talking about. I know we've been rambling on about sharpening the tools and kind of building your portfolio or whatever, your target package. But now we get to like dive in and really look at the maps. And this is where I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna kind of go through a unit and go through a bit of the pieces of it. Uh, a bit of the things I'm looking for, a bit of the you know features we're looking for, and kind of just how I go about it. We may have to skip forward and, and jump around a little bit, uh, but it'll kind of give you an idea of, like what I'm looking for and how I go about it in my system for e-scouting a unit. Now we're going to choose a unit that I've never been to, and we may bounce from unit to unit uh, just so I don't give up too much from somebody's unit. Uh, people tend to get angry when you do that. So we may bounce around a little bit, but all in all, you get the concept of how we go through, you know, the, the phases of, of scouting. I look at this as we're trying to build a hunt plan. And the explore and discover phase is kind of the rough draft of writing a paper, right? Like we're going to go and we're going to throw a bunch of ink down. And the beautiful thing about doing this in Onyx is that we can take it off. We can put it in folders. We can hide stuff. We can move stuff. And it's not like a physical map where once you draw on it, you kind of always see it. So I'm really big about kind of, I just do everything in Onyx Hunt because it's easy and I can take stuff out, hide it, change the views, all those things. So we're going to go through and I'm going to scout everything in there. Um, this is a unit I've never I've been to it, but I never really hunted it. Never really even e-scouted it for that matter. In this explore and discover phase, people ask like, oh, how long should I, should I e-scout? I'm going to show you how to kind of set things up, but I will say that like I spend copious amounts of hours kind of exploring and researching and, and looking for new things. So it kind of depends on you. you I want to set this up so you can accomplish it in a short-ish amount of time and not just spend hours and hours and hours and hours looking over maps. If you enjoy looking over maps like I do, I'm sure you'll be able to just keep doing that. But I'm trying to develop it to where it's like, okay, here's how you can be effective with it. Um, I think a lot of people get burnout and they kind of just, I'll go, I'll go scout it. You know, I'll go drive there and I'll just hunt it. Um, and I think you'd be surprised how many people you go there. It can be more intimidating once your boots on the ground and nothing looks the same. And maybe you're like, I wish I would have looked at this or I wish I would have looked at that. So I've been through a lot of the struggles and I'm gonna try to help you avoid them. So let's dive into how to e-scout and how to, how to explore and discover. All right, we're gonna break down a unit in Montana. Now, before anyone gets too upset, uh, we're gonna break down unit 322. Now that's probably gonna make a lot of people upset because this is a very popular unit, but I also feel like because it's a popular unit, there's really no secrets. Uh, a ton of people hunt this. Uh, it's not a unit I would hunt, but this, this unit gives me the ability to show a bunch of different things. Now, before you get carried away and think I'm going to give up your honey hole, uh, I doubt it. I'm not putting a ton of effort into this. I merely just want to show you guys kind of the system, right? So I'm not going to choose the best place in the unit. Uh, and, you know, if you go there and there's no elk there, I, I hope you don't assume I'm, I'm uh, not very good at this. But I... Uh, but I kind of want to show you kind of the system, right? So we're going to gloss over a few things and I want to just show you how we're putting the pieces together, but I will show you a lot of the things I do look for. Uh, having said all that, this is going to be a real brief kind of overview. And normally I would spend hours and hours kind of looking for certain things. So uh, we're going to kind of rush through a lot of that stuff. So we're going to dive into unit 322. Uh, and one of the things I, I do like about this unit is it does have a little bit of both, uh, you know, whether a calling type terrain and the glassing type terrain. And so it kind of gives me the ability to show you guys both of those. Uh, as you as you look at this unit, what you do see is that there, for better or worse, there's a ton of access. <laughs> so if you're a calling guy, I do think access is good. Um, this unit has a ton of access and you can cover a lot of ground. Uh, normally in like choosing a unit back to that like phase one, I might not choose this unit based on that because it is it may be tough to get away from people. Personally, I haven't spent a ton of time in this unit, so I don't really know. Um, there could be pockets, and I do see potential as I've kind of like just spent a little bit of time e-scouting it. Uh, but that's kind of considerations, right? Uh, we go back to what type of hunt you want. Uh, you know, you want to you want to be calling and covering a lot of ground. Then this can be a good unit uh, because it has a ton of access. So these purple lines are all going to be access roads, uh, and these spotted purple lines are going to be say limited access, whether it's like a four wheeler or side by side or, or something along those lines. So this is the 
motor vehicle use uh, layer, essentially. Uh, and, th and this will tell us a lot. You know, we can kind of find some nooks and crannies. So back to uh, we have chosen 322. This is the unit we're going to go to. And, you know, as we start to e-scout, you know, as we start to put our, our target package together in these things, you know, one of the first things I'm going to do is basically I'm going to jump into satellite mode and I'm going to start looking for the key features that I want out of the hunt. Now, let's say just for, for argument's sake that on this hunt, you know, I kind of want a blend of being able to glass, but I also want to be able to call. Uh, you know, I like having both of those, a little bit of both. You know, I'd love to, you know, call in a, a um, but if I can glass them up too, I'm okay with that. So those are kind of the features. And when we dive into it, I'm going to give you a, a kind of two different areas. One that I think is, you know, show you what good calling terrain would look like. And then one that's more like glass heavy. So this is kind of a better glass area. So we're going to dive into it. Uh, but a lot, a lot of times I, I spend, you know, an hour, two, three hours just perusing through the unit. And I'll kind of show you what I do. Uh, and, and the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of start highlighting areas of interest. Now to do this, I'm going to use the area shape tool and I'm just going to make kind of areas uh, that, that catch my eye as I'm cruising through them. So what's catching my eye? And this is kind of important to go through. Uh, what's catching my eye is edge habitat. And, you know, I don't really care if it's remote or not remote yet. Um, I'm going to just circle good edge habitat that I see. Uh, people can get too in the weeds by focusing on the remote first. So I like to just find good habitat, you know, the things that are going to, that I'm looking for. And that's for this hunt. Now, we could flip this on its head and say, uh, there's an area that I'm going to hunt this year that is far more glassing centric. So in that case, when I scout, if I'm glass, only want to glass and I know that's the, you know, the technique that's going to be the most successful, then I'm, I'm really only looking for glassing locations. So I want to kind of specify those two, but as we fly around, uh, you know, you can go into the satellite mode and, and basically I'm going to go at a 45 degree angle and I just want to cover ground. I'm looking looking uh, in these nooks and crannies, kind of find, you know, at that edge habitat. And this unit's full of it. It's got tons of great, you know, blend where that you see how this is like got little parks, uh, those type of things. It's got plenty of cover, like all these things. And, you know, you spend time flying around and, and I kind of just start in here. I don't know where I'm at, but um, let's just hypothetically say we're going to like cruise up this canyon and we're going to look around. We're just going to see what we see for a minute and for argument's sake this isn't the best example but i want to rush through this oh we can find one better than that let's see here what's a good example of edge habitat here actually i didn't mind that stuff we were at before like i would say this is kind of a good example of edge habitat so uh, we're going to come up here, grab our area shape tool, and you know what? I'm just going to, we're in rough draft mode. We're just going to circle this area right out the gate. Now, um, I'm going to save this, and we can go get into, you know, folders and different colors and all those things. But for now, uh, I'm excited about the unit. I'm just going to fly around. I'm going to circle stuff that kind of looks interesting, uh, looks good, looks elky all those things. And I really don't want to worry about remoteness. I don't want to worry about anything. I don't care where I'm going to camp or how I'm going to access it. Uh, I'm just going to, you know, find remote first or find the, the good habitats first. And to me, that's kind of the most important for this type of hunt. And, you know, so I'm going to spend a ton of time doing this. You know, in the back of my head, one of the things that I'm going to take into consideration is going to be slope. You know, I'm, I'm looking for that that mellow slope. And I can come back and look at this, but I, I, as I was cruising, I noticed that I was like, man, this is pretty mellow. This seems to be, you know, just really elky to me. Uh, and so like, it's just something I think about it. It's not the end all be all. And I'll show you guys a cool way to figure that out later, but I'm just going to circle this cause it looks good. Now, um, I don't name these. I don't do anything right now because this is a rough draft. And and it's and I said in the previous video, it's a lot like writing a paper. We're going to come through and just we're going to put everything down. And we're going to get a rough draft. You know, in video four, we'll come back and we'll clean up everything. But right now, we're just kind of like, hey, what's Elky? What's good? Uh, and we're looking for those key things. This is, you know, we're, we're looking for that blend of bedding and, and feed where we can get good calling opportunities, but maybe be able to glass some stuff up too.
Okay, so you can kind of see how, you know, I got this one circled here and I, I got all these areas kind of mapped out for a few reasons. You know, I like this one. It does have that north face. I know I say I'm not romantic about north faces, but, um, you know, there's just different pockets in here that I'm like, ooh, that looks good. That looks good. And so you can kind of see how I use this area shape tool to just highlight areas on a map, what I find interesting. And what I'm really looking for down the road is patterns or groups or clusters of areas that I like, because again, it gets into efficiency and whatnot. So as we zoom out, you can see I filled in a bunch of different areas on this map and they're kind of bounced all over the unit. Uh, so there's no, not a whole lot of rhyme or reason, uh, but we'll start to break that down a little bit more. Uh, and so the nice thing is that as we get into like having folders, so what, the reason we have folders is we can kind of take stuff on and off the map and cluster them together. And so let's just take this one. If you want to create a folder, you, we should already have the folders, but if you haven't do so, uh, and then we're going to take one of these and say, we're going to add to folder. So just click on the area, add to folder. And, and if you haven't done it already, there's a bunch of stuff hidden from here, but uh, if you haven't yet, you can actually go and do all these areas. I have already done them. Uh, but you can click in all of these areas that you have on the map and just add them to a folder. Then we'll go in here and we'll add them to our areas of interest, area of interest uh, folder. And, and there you have it. And now the nice thing is, is that once I start adding a whole bunch of stuff to the map, I have the ability to go into my content. I can go to areas of interest and I can hit hide all. And this, oop, missed one. <laughs> uh, but this gives us the ability to kind of move stuff around. Now, once I have those areas of interest, I'm gonna cluster those into maybe parts that I like. Maybe there's a cluster that I was like, ooh, I really like this or I really like this. And for me, it's kind of just taking that cluster of data and, and saying like, okay, here's the three core areas that I'm looking for. Uh, and then I'll show you kind of how we did that. So I use the blue to show kind of core areas, core areas of interest. Um, and then, you know, like, so here's a good example. So, you know, this is like a little cluster and I'm like, okay, these are, this is a little cluster, you know, for whatever reason, I like this area. So same with that, same with over here, you know, like, okay, here's a cluster. I'm going to, like, this could be area two uh, within the unit that I'm interested in. Now, uh, you'll notice that I have a bunch of green in this one. So for me, I kind of use green is just more specific and I'll use these in the hunt plan later but if I find a pocket that I'm like man that looks really really good then maybe I'll I'll jump in and uh, let's hide these so you can see it a little better and then I can and then I can kind of zoom in on these and say like this is you know the area I really like uh, and this will kind of get more into the hunt plans but this is how I use area this map or sorry area shape tool to to basically as a highlighter on the map. And again, you know, back in the old days, I used to highlight my regular map, but you can't really take it off and unsee things. So what highlighting it do kind of gives you a feature, but as you can see, the map gets really busy when you do this. So you can actually go in and, and hide or remove from the map if you want. So let's kind of dive into this uh, this northern area in the unit. Again, I, I don't know if there's up there, guys. I didn't spend a ton of time in this, but there are a few things I like, and I want to show you what I do like and kind of what you know sparks my interest. Uh, number one is the security. As you can see, there's not a ton of purple in here, so there is some gaps in the in the you know, from the road pressure, at least, uh, not all, not always. Um, the other thing I like is kind of this edge with, with private, you know, I really actually want to show you guys something, uh, is I, as I was panning around, you know, this, this hillside looked really good to me. Uh, this whole hillside here looks pretty good and yeah, it's private and we can't hunt it, but that doesn't mean that there's not elk there that are using a lot of this, you know, this BLM ground, which not a ton of people will, will go because it is kind of that small hustle game. So I do like that. Um, I like some of these features over here. You know, this whole Canyon looks pretty good and it looks pretty huntable. I, I like that it is, it's got that little bit of security. It's got the openness that you can still glass. And, you know, I still think there's a ton of calling opportunity because it does have these thicker Northern slopes, uh, these features right now. So there's a few things I like about it. And we're going to hone in on this one as like my core calling area. And this, so that's kind of why, uh, to dive into it. I think there's a little bit of ground. You can cover some ground, but I think you can kind of hunt it. A 
efficiently. For all those reasons, like we'll, we'll hone in on this. I don't know if it's any good. And if this is your honey hole, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, but you know, we're going to, we're going to take a look at this. And then uh, from here, we're going to like start filling our folder. So again, the, the point of a rough draft is not to make the entire hunt plan, but we want to start putting pieces together to see, you know, what kind of patterns were recognized. So the next thing I would do, you know, if I was like, oh man, this, this cluster looks pretty good to me. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, maybe uh, I'm going to just start filling folders. So, uh, which I've already done, but we're going to go and say, you know, next, uh, let's, let's pull up the glassing points. Right. Um, so from here I can, uh, I can go in and I can pan around and find my glassing points. And to do this, you know, I may use uh, view shed. I may use whatever. I'll show you guys how to do that. But you know, a lot of times I'm just kind of cruising around and looking for these high points that I think I can glass from. And, you know, the old school way to do it was just to kind of get behind the hill and see what you could see type thing. Um, but Onyx has got a really cool tool now with the, with the view shed. We'll jump in here. So if we jump into the view shed, one of the cool things is um, we can we can basically see what we can see from each point. So, you know, as we scroll up this ridge, kind of hard to tell, it's pretty dark here, but um, as we scroll, is that the right ridge? <laughs> so as we scroll, this gives us to see the areas that light up and kind of tell you, you know, what you can see from those. Um, and that's kind of a great tool. I use it more to check on things than I do uh, to actually find glassing points, uh, but it's kind of cool. Uh, to, to be able to just like see what you could see from each point. Now, <clears throat> now, now that we have all of our glassing points, you know, we can add all the glassing points. We think we can see, you know, maybe these prime core areas and, and from there we'll add them to the folder. You know, next we're going to jump in and, you know, say we add, oops, I don't want to add a folder. Let's say next we want to add our, our, uh, our, our access points. This is going to show us everything. Um, but, you know, we can add our access points and, you know, these are all the places we could get into this area from, right? Uh, and little pro tip here, I, I set this up. I didn't know it was going to pop up. But, uh, you know, if you guys are the type that, you know, say you're like, hey, this old boy ain't killing a bull more than five miles from any road or anything. This gives you an idea like how far things are from each trailhead. Uh, and so it's it's kind of a cool feature. You can just set your this point and then you can just add a radius to that point uh, or take it off and you can change the distance. So kind of cool little feature. Uh, gives you the ability to maybe say how far far something is away or how far you should be looking, I guess would be a better way to put that. But also a lot of times you can use it, you know, if you're like, well, you know, everything it, that's too close to the road or whatever, that's too close to the trailhead. That's probably going to get seen. So, uh, that's just a cool way to kind of give you a rough idea. Uh, I could pan over to, uh, say a wilderness unit. This is, I think where it gets really interesting is it's easy to start panning around and flying around in like sky mode, and find really great stuff and only to realize you're way too far from the truck. So, you know, if you, if you use this to set kind of a boundary in this, in this, re, this area, it definitely doesn't matter. But in some places you may say like, okay, I don't want to be glassing or looking for stuff that's, you know, more than five miles from a trailhead or a road or anything like that. So, uh, and that's a good way to kind of figure that out. You could go in here and you could set the distance real quick say to five miles, if that was your max. Um, and obviously that's pretty big. Uh, and then that would kind of give you, I, I don't think there's anywhere in this unit that's, you know, five miles from a vehicle. So I don't think you have to worry about that too much. Uh, but you know, just a, a little pro tip there, uh, works pretty good. Okay. So now we have all of our access points. Um, you know, we're kind of just going through the folders. We're going to fill all the stuff we can, you know, I may go in and say, because I'm looking for calling type terrain, uh, let's look for bedding areas. And so we'll, we'll add in all our bedding areas and I'll show you kind of how I did that. Okay. So, you know, when you're looking for bedding areas, you know, you can use, I, I like to switch to topo. And, um, here's a real classic example. Uh, I'll look for these, you know, North facing and find these benches, these heavy, heavily timbered areas 
where you know you might have a flat spot or something like that. Now that's not to mean that there is gonna be elk bedded there, but those are just likely places. And, and this is a great scenario of, you know, I would just see if there was elk in here. Obviously I'm gonna hit this glassing point. And then while I'm there, say I glass the morning and then midday, maybe I'll sneak down in here if I hadn't heard anything uh, and check to see if there is, you know, elk sign on this bench, you know, maybe search this bench just to see if there's elk sign, uh, fresh sign or whatever it may be. And that can tell you a lot. Now, if the, you know, if you're going to hunt it and it's during hunting season and the wind's blowing right down in there, maybe not, but you know, just kind of a gives, gives a good example. So, uh, over here's another great area like this, um, well, uh, this, this area is weird lining, uh, but they has pretty good benches in it too. Uh, and then another one over here, um, this is kind of a smaller one. I don't know if this would be very good, but kind of gives you the idea. We're looking for those North face benches that, um, that have the ability to maybe be a good bedding area. And it just be, you know, look, going back to satellite mode, you can see kind of this thicker timber, uh, surrounded by a lot of thin timber, like those, those have good potential. This one actually really does look good. This kind of big bench here. So you might check that out. Um, maybe worth investigating and tell you if there's elk sign in there. So, uh, again, another feature we're looking for, we're just going to stack all these. So we're going to go through basically find a bunch of bedding areas, and then we're going to add those to a folder. That way we can kind of take them on and off as we go. All right, so next we're gonna plug in our water. And uh, you know, this unit doesn't really matter. There's gonna be a lot of, lot of water all over. It, it probably wouldn't be something I was gonna focus on, but if it was say New Mexico or somewhere like that, it would it would really matter. And you know, there's a couple of ways to find water. Obviously, switching to topo uh, allows you to see water uh, really well. And, and Onyx will kind of show you springs. Here's a good example of one right here. Um, you know, this little water spring right here. And I found it to be pretty accurate. Uh, it, it, I don't know how they're doing it, but it's very accurate. And man, I've been able to find springs that uh, whole outfitters have told me, hey, how'd you figure that out? Um, it's right on Onyx. Uh, and the, then the other way is, uh, this, this isn't going to be true here, but in other units, uh, the other way to do it is to zoom in uh, on your satellite and you'd be amazed if, if you have any kind of country that has cattle in it, these cattle will leave trails that you can see from space. And this one, I don't see any, but I I'll just pretend this kind of looks like it, but it's not, uh, you know, you could see a trail or something like that. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just fly that trail until I pop up and then, you know, you'll find a water, uh, you know, a drink tank or a, a drinker or something along those lines and mark those. And, you know, so in units where water matters, I may spend, you know, a couple hours mapping out every single water on the mountain that I can find both by satellite and by spring locator. But this unit, I won't spend a ton of time. I merely just kind of did it for you guys to check out. Uh, having said that, if, if I went to this unit and scouted, and I found water that looked like elk had been using, I don't know, maybe on the side of this mountain or something like that, then I would definitely mark it and like make note of that um, because that does matter. Uh, but those are going to be, you know, find those out scouting. I think what you'll find is a lot of, you know, units like this in the mountains, lots of water, elk tend to not really move to one or the other. They kind of have lots of options. So to me, it's not a big deal in this unit on this particular hunt. All right, so as you can kind of see, it's starting to come together, starting to make a little more sense. Um, and I may do this on multiple different areas uh, as far as adding glassing points and bedding and the, the, you know, the key features that I'm looking for that in my, in my target package. And I may add those to different ones. Say I came over here and I'm going to add a bunch of glassing uh, and maybe I'll add the water. Maybe I'll add feed again, you know, depending on what the unit is, is kind of your priorities. I I'm not going to highlight feed areas. Um, whereas if I was in, you know, say the breaks of Montana, you know, my top three categories are probably going to be uh, feed, water, and glassing. Like those are going to be my number one priorities. Whereas if I'm going into more of a calling hunt, my priorities are going to be like bedding areas, maybe glassing locations if I can, uh, and then routes. Like that's going to be bigger uh, because I, I need to cover a bunch of ground. So, and a little bit of water, not much, but you know, anyway, uh, you can kind of see how it starts to come together and, and I'll start to do this here and there, but mainly on kind of my core areas. I'm not going to pick every one, uh, but 
but I will save these because I like to have backup plans. So in the next video, we're going to dive into, you know, basically how do I make a plan and how do I put this together and start to see what looks efficient. So, you know, I may go through and do it for here, do it for here. Uh, I may choose different places and, and start to put together all my access. I'm not going to do access and bedding and glassing for the entire unit. I'm going to just focus on the three areas that I think kind of look the best to me. And some of this is kind of an art, it's a gut intuition, but I'm gonna start putting the pieces together. Uh, and so in the next video, we'll, we'll dive through and ha on how to make a plan with that. And then also how to add information as you go, you know, all the animals you find as on scout trips and things like that. So uh, that's kind of the rough start. And you can kind of see how it starts to form a picture. And again, I'll probably spend hours doing this uh, in for a few different areas. And then, you know, the, the beautiful thing about this system is that it doesn't, it, by, by having folders, it doesn't really focus me in on those areas. So one thing I'll do is kind of just take all the folders off and I'll, and it's super easy to do. So I can just come back in here and hide all my folders and I can just go to my content. Oops, I don't need to add that one. Uh, and I can, I can hide these folders and basically start over. If I feel like, okay, I wanna go find something new. Now I can take all these pens off and I can go find something new. And then just like that, you know, I kind of have everything back to scratch. I don't have anything blurring my vision or, you know, making me hone in on one thing or another. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll do some scouting and then I'll hide everything for myself and I'll go back and look again uh, just to kind of get a fresh perspective. And I, I think that helps. Uh, it helps me, you know, not focus in on the same areas over and over because inevitably if there's a bunch of highlighter marks on a map, I'm going to go look at them. And, and I try to like have a fresh perspective every time I come and look at the map, you know, maybe I take a break and, you know, in three or four days, I'm gonna come back and look again and see what I see. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a cool way to have to be able to hide that. All right. So as you can see, it starts to come together. Again, we're kind of just putting a bunch of stuff on the map to try to figure it all out. And it's a kind of a slow process. I would say when you're, when you're dealing with Rubik's cubes, you kind of just got to keep playing with it until you figure it out. And I feel like that's e-scouting is I'm always just trying to like dive in and find that balance of, you know, remoteness and huntability, efficient, effectiveness and efficiency. And I'm, I'm putting all those pieces together. And this can take, you know, hours and hours and hours. A lot of times I'll, I'll be looking at the map every night, uh, you know, for an hour or so before I go to bed. And so as you can start to see, like it's starting to put the plan together. We're starting to see it come together. And in, in the next video, in video four, we're going to really develop a hunt plan. We're going to hone in. So we're going to take that rough draft that we've put together now and we're gonna we're gonna start chopping it up and trying to make some plans now i can already tell you that this unit by just what we've done so far is definitely one that i'm gonna want to go scout and test a lot of these theories because it does seem pretty tough uh to get away from people uh just looking at the unit and just kind of look from what i've seen so far i, I definitely want to go see and it's not something i would want to bet a whole bunch of time just in season unless i had a long season so anyway Next video, we're going to dive into kind of honing in and creating a hunt plan.